Today is the last episode of the Wolves Football Manager 2021 beta save. We've got two games to go. Home against Burnley, away against Spurs. Sixth place is still up for grabs. It's between us and Leicester. And I'm very pleased to say that Leicester have lost their last two games against Arsenal and Liverpool. We are in the driving seat. We've worked so hard to get to sixth. Can we hold on to it? And our final two games reach the Europa League. What's going on guys? My name is Adam. I am a super swan. I will cut to episode 9 of the FM21 Wolves Beta Save. The final episode of this series. And there you go, my friends. Wolves in 6th, 63 points. Leicester in 7th, 57 points. What that means is one point in our next two games. We will have secured 6th place in the league. We've been there most of the season, but considering the board only wanted a top half finish, we are in the driving seat for a Europa League place. So there's only one game you missed out on, and that was the Aston Villa game, which we won 1-0. It was a good strike. Who scored that game? I only did it like two minutes ago. Who was it? Adam Traore, that's right. He round, he like started from his own half, ran down the pitch, rounded the keeper, got the goal. Literally, I, I played it like two seconds ago, so I don't know how I forgot. But we did get the important win, so we've got Burnley and Spurs coming up today and as it's just shown Raul Jimenez he's not going to be fit enough for the game sadly but he's still only one goal behind Lacazette in the top goal scoring charts so even with our best player out injured we're gonna hopefully hang on for that Europa League place and I hope we just get the job done against Burnley if we get the job done against Burnley we can lose against Spurs and it won't matter so we're gonna go to the team selection this is gonna be the team to get the point we need for Europa League Rui Patricio in goal, Ike Nori, Connor Cody, Willy Bowley and Nelson Semedo at the back. Dendonecker and Neves in the midfield with David Neres on the left, Martinho and Traore on the right. Vinicius Jr. starts up front. We haven't really had a good striker since Jimenez has been out. So uh, if I was to stay one more year, I'd be on the hunt for a striker to back him up. But that's the side. Let's get this game underway. Let's get this Burnley game started. All we need is a point. One point. A draw will be enough. But obviously we want to make sure we win the game. I'm going to pump the fists. We have the chance to qualify for the Europa League 2. No, no, it's the main Europa League. Get it right. Do you know, after all this, right, if 6th doesn't get Europa League, I'm going to be very disappointed. But we're going to get the game underway. There's the pre-match graphics. Wolves in decent form. We're going to look at Burnley. What are they looking like? No, they're in decent form themselves. Three draws, a win and a loss. 4-4-2. Four, four, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get the job done. There's the table to confirm where we all are. It's the first time I've shown this off, by the way, which is a very neat feature. But we're going to get the game underway. One point is all we need. Free kick from Jao Martinho headed away. But we should get there first. Ruben Neves holding back. Slots it out to Nelson Samedo. Connor Cody can play defence or midfield, so he's no stranger to going up. But lovely ball to Vinicius Jr. But it just was a very poor shot. On the half an hour mark, we're going to start from the back. That's Connor Cody. Finds Dendonecker. He's scored a few lovely goals this season. Samedo running the right-hand side, running the show. He's got some space to run into, but he does lose out to Richie. And Burnley's going to have the chance now to build back from the back. As Dendonecker, good ball to Vinicius Jr. Puts it in the back of the net. And Vinicius Jr. is the goal scorer. 1-0 to Wolves. And if things stay the way they are, we will be in sixth place. Which, as far as I understand it, is a Europa League spot. Dendonecker with a through ball. He takes the touch. Puts it in the near post. Sixth goal of the season. 1-0. Coming up to half-time, still only the one goal. Not many highlights to speak of, but I can see that both Nelson Samedo and Dendonecker 
I've picked up knocks from the looks of it. I'm going to give a pump of the fists. Things are going well, but they can go better. And there we go. So we've got Samedo, Neres looking tired. So I think we'll bring on Neko Williams for Samedo. We'll bring on... Who have we got? Fernand Torres. We'll bring him on for David Neres. So we've already made two changes for some knocks. But we're going to start the second half. Fingers crossed we can hang on for that sixth place finish we all want. Richie plays in Jay Rodriguez. Comes into the box. Nobody really closing him down, but we forced him out wide. Is that a foul? The referee's going to look at VAR. I don't think that's a foul, but I've been proven wrong in this series already to what I think is a foul and what isn't. So checking the penalty, checking VAR. What's the referee going to give? I don't think that's a penalty. But I've been wrong before. No penalty. Thank you very much, referee. I'll slip you a fiver later. Burnley back on the ball. Jack Cork finds Brownhill in the midfield. Goes out wide to Matt Ritchie as far as I... Well, I think it's Matt Ritchie. Yes, it is. It is Matt Ritchie. I'm right. But it's a long shot over the bar. And now he's been subbed off. 70th minute. This is where I'd normally look to make subs, but I've already made two. I've got both Dendonecker and Matinho looking a bit tired. Adama Traore on a 6.3. So I'm going to rest Matinho, I think. We're going to bring Matinho off. Pedro Neto can come on for him. Last change of the day. As long as we don't kind of self-destruct, sixth place is ours. But we do get a highlight. As Wood, there's a tackle from Alt Nori, clears it away. Or was it Ait Nori? Yes, yeah, an I. It's Ait Nori. Or I Nori? I don't know, he's French, it could be pronounced either way. But Nico Williams, long ball up to Vinicius Jr., intercepted. But Ruben Neves will pick that up. Players ahead of him, but decides to go back to the defence. Trying to look for that space. There's Connor Cody, little one-twos with Aitnori. Ferran Torres, he's come on, beats the slide, gets the ball back. But he doesn't get the interception. And now Burnley, it's a long highlight. We all know what happens with long highlights in this game. I can smell a goal, I, but who's it going to be for? Ferran Torres takes a touch, finds Neto, puts it wide. My goal senses are incorrect. Nick Pope starting from the back for Burnley. We've got about 10 minutes of this game left to go. We're doing everything the way we should be. As Dendonecker intercepts for Vinicius Jr. Back to Neto. Long ball out to find Traore. Does get there. His player's in the box to find. He goes down, though. Is that a penalty? I personally don't think it is. If I, I don't think that's a penalty. And I'm a Wolves manager. And I don't think that's a penalty. But who's he going to give? He gives the penalty. There we go. So that five right slipped him earlier. I might have to slip him another one after this penalty. But Ruben Neves puts it in the net. 2-0 to Wolves now. That should be it. And that will be the confirmation that we have reached the Europa League as well so long as Europa League gets a sixth place as far as I know sixth place gets a Europa League spot we'll so soon find out though full time fast approaching and it's barely on the ball we've revenged the one nil loss we had a few weeks back well a few weeks in game it was like literally about I don't know an hour ago recording so I'm recording like three episodes in a row but Neto can he make it three Finds Vinicius Jr., beats his man, gets the shot straight at Nick Pope. And one thing we've learned, Vinicius Jr. is not a striker. But that doesn't matter. We've got the win. It's 2-0. That'll be enough for Europa League. I'm very happy with the way you've played. And that will be a confirmation. Samedo looks like he's injured, but it's a good job. We've only got one game to go. And uh, yeah, he's out for four to seven weeks, so... Sadly, we won't be seeing Samedo again. Davin Neres, he's only picked up a, sh a knock. But we've qualified for the Europa Cup 2. But does that mean we've qualified for Europa League? Does it, right? Does it say who qualifies for what? Let's have a look at the rules here. Uh, so 6th. Yeah, so 6th gets Europa League place. If no more than 7 teams qualify for Continental Cups. So I think we have got a Europa League place confirmed from what i can see here so i think we're fine as much as the game's told us it's a europa cup 2 i don't believe it i don't believe you game i think we have qualified for europa league 
If we look at the confirmation there, you know, I don't think Leicester can catch us now. The, the maximum they can get is 63 points. We're on 66. 66? 66. We can't get higher than 6th. We have confirmed that will be where we finish for the season. Job done. We've reached the Europa League. So we can relax. And I think what we'll do is we will play the Spurs game. We'll chill out for a bit. We'll talk about the beta because it's a bit of a meaningless game now. So I'll see you for the Spurs game. We can chill. We've got where we wanted to be. There's the confirmation we all wanted to see as Wolves qualify for the Europa League by securing a top six Premier League finish. And what also made me quite happy is the next article as the board set the initial budget for next season. 1.6 million wages, 61 million pound transfers. Woohoo! I think what I might do, and I don't know yet, don't, don't hold me to this, but I think what I might do is after the season ends, I might play out the second season with Wolves and just let you all know how I spent that 61 mil. Because if we sign, if we sell Johnny as well for 35 mil, we could be looking at a hundred million pound transfer budget for next year. Very, very interesting. But we are going to go for the last game of the season against Wolves, uh, against uh, Spurs rather. And Leicester did lose again. They lost to Liverpool again. So we're like six points clear of them at this point. So we're not going to worry too much about this game. I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about the bait to save and how it's all gone. So I think overall, we achieved what we wanted to achieve at Wolves. I know I said I was going to go for a few seasons, but I've got a good project going on at the moment for the main save of the channel. So that's something you'll be all looking forward to. That'll be coming on the channel starting from next week. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this in the future, it's already probably ongoing and you know more than the people watching this live. So, so far, I've been really impressed with the Football Manager 2021. And as much as obviously what's going, on, what's going on in real life, pandemic, things like that, I mean, we didn't expect much anyway. So the fact that they've given the UI a bit of an overhaul, the match engine's got a bit better... You know, things are a lot smoother. You've got the quick chat. You've got the, you know, the way that press conferences happen. That's been overhauled. And it's just really, really smooth. It's really, really good. And I think, you know, if you're someone coming from FM20 to FM21, you know, someone like me, I'm always going to buy it, right? Because I like Football Manager. But it's very minute changes that I think's made a big difference. And things like the condition that, doesn't give the number anymore. Like, I was a bit nervous ahead of that because when I first seen it announced, I was a bit kind of, oh, I'm not sure how I feel about that because I like to see like the numbers and make sure we can make the right tactical decisions. But I'm actually on board with the indicator because they're right in what they're saying. In real life, you don't have a number above someone's head to tell you that they're 73% match condition. You've just got to kind of gauge it from what you can see. So I'm really happy with that. And I'm on board with it. I'm on board with the, with the new uh, match condition and the match sharpness. The XG, I think, is a massive, massive plus because the way I used to look at it before, which I'm sure a lot of people did, was the clear-cut chances, the half chances, and kind of based it on that. But this XG match story gives you a lot better idea as to how the game is going. Like, looking at this one as an example, Wolves are actually doing a lot better. I mean, you look at it, we've only had one more shot on target than Spurs. But you can see here all the little chances and all the shots off target are showing that we have a higher expected goals than Spurs. And Spurs are very much underperforming in this game. So that's really, really good. And what I touched upon before about the new way you do team talks with the sort of the actual gestures as opposed to like, you know, aggressive, positive, stuff like that, what we had in the previous games, I think gives a bit of a, you know, more realistic feel towards the actual team talks. So that's pretty good as well. But yeah, I mean, it's football manager at the end of the day. You kind of, it is what you expect it to be. And, you know, especially this year of all years, we weren't expecting much because of the pandemic. I certainly wasn't anyway. So I think the Miles and the team at SI, I think have done a really good job here. And I just want to say thank you to them, really, because they've done really well with the resources and the time they've had. I mean, they could very easily have said, look, guys, with what's going on, we're going to either just put an update out for 20 or we're just going to, you know, keep things simple. But they've actually done a lot of stuff to this game. So fair play to them. I think it's 
something that we shouldn't really forget about, to be fair. So my overall thoughts so far, now that obviously the full game's come out, looks really, really good, and I'm really excited for Football Manager 2021. Like I said, I've got a new series coming out on the channel next week. If you've seen my Twitter, at SuperSwanYT, I've put little tasters on what is out there. I think I put the thumbnail out there. I've put out a little bit of a taster as to what's to come. David Neres just put us 1-0 up. Even better. And I'm really looking forward to that save. And it's a, a type of save I haven't done before, which is quite surprising, considering the channel is coming up to three years old in January. So uh, keep an eye on the channel this week. If you're watching this live on the day or watching this kind of the week it comes out. So it's all systems go for this channel. I'm really looking forward to launching that series. And it's going to be a one club save. I'll tell you that much. It is one club save. It's not a journeyman. So we've done journeymans the past two years with Campus the Champions last year, which I really enjoyed. And we did the Brexit Manager in Football Manager 2019. Both saves really good. And this new save I'm going to do for Football Manager 21, I think it's going to be a very similar length because we are going to be building up a club from quite low down to where they want to be. So you know, we'll put little spoilers in there so you can kind of work out what it's going to be. I mean, if you look on my Twitter, it's already there. But yeah, looking really forward to that. So yeah, it's been a pretty, you know, pretty good game. Football Manager 21, pretty good game. We've got a goal ruled out for uh, for VAR. I haven't even made any subs in this game, but it's the last game of the season. Ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And one thing I will say as well is that this isn't going to be the last time you see Wolves on this channel. So I'm not going to say too much at this moment in time. By this point, it might have already been announced, to be fair, but I'm not going to say too much on this video because when I'm recording it, it's not much been announced, but there is going to be a beta challenge coming out, which is a bunch of Football Manager content creators coming together for a 16-team tournament. I'm not going to say too much, but I am involved in that tournament. So you have to watch the channel for, for what we're going to do with Wolves. But I might. I don't know. With, with this new 100 bill, do I include that team in the challenge? I don't know. But we've come out 2-0 winners against Spurs away from home. So well done, boys. Last game of the season. You smashed it. I didn't really do much. I just set the team and just talked about Football Manager for 10 minutes. But fair play, Leicester lost again to Crystal Palace. We finished, what, 12 points clear of them in the end. They really did ball it towards the end of the season. But well done. We finished the season. Vinicius Junior's out for six days. That's fine. The season's over. Dendonecker on form. And if you look at the final Premier League table, sixth place. And in the end, it was quite comfortable. It was very touch and go up until this episode, but very, very comfortable. Liverpool won the league, 97 points for Liverpool. They marched to the league title once again. Arsenal did well, second place, Chelsea third, United fourth, City in fifth. I think Pep's going to be sacked in the morning. And uh, Wolves, best of the rest, in sixth place with Leicester coming in seventh. Spurs, very disappointing season for them, 13th place. They were in the relegation zone at one point. So, uh, Jose, has been sacked. And I think whoever's taken over is probably going to be sacked as well. But there we go, guys. We're going to go forward to the last part of the new additions for Football Manager 2021. And that's going to be the end of season review. Here we go. End of season review 2020 to 2021. It's the first time I've seen this as well. So we're going through this together. So the new arrivals, let's have a look. We have Vinicius Jr., Domingos Duarte, Neko Williams, Fernand Torres, Czech Membengu, and David Neres. It was a busy season in the transfer market. Safe to say it was good business done. Bringing key new signings who contributed hugely to the season's success. They've given David Neres the signing of the season award. For, we did sign him for 42 mil. So, you know, he was our most expensive signing by a long shot. But the board gave us a C. They were content with that. The season results. A season to remember. As Wolves were one of the competition's feel-good stories. Defying expectations. And thanks to an impressive spell of form that began in December. And saw them rise as high as sixth place. Were able to celebrate a job well done. So how it unfolded. They wanted to top off. We finished sixth. Raul Jimenez was the second top goal scorer in the division. 
and the board were delighted through our Europa League place. Our biggest win, a 4-0 win over West Brom, our local rivals, the Black Country Derby. We uh, lost to Man United 1-0. Oh, sorry, no, match remember was we won against Man United 1-0. Jao Martinho grabbing the goal there. I think we beat them home and away. Yeah, we did. We had the goal of the season being uh, Vinicius Jr. So can we watch it? Let's have a look. How do I watch the goal of the season? Is there a way I can watch this goal of the season? Uh, as he hits inside zone half. Right, I'm going to move it this out. I can watch it. Right, I've gone into the match. We're going to watch the goal of the season. So Ike Nori gives it to Neves. This is the goal. So Vinicius Jr. picks it up in his own half. He runs the length of the pitch. He bursts past the defender. He takes a long shot. It goes in the goal. It was a very worthy goal of the season. There's a few of mine that I would have suggested. But uh, that is the goal of the season. And let's have a look. The reputation didn't really change. Not change over the past season. No new sponsorships. Raul Jimenez was the best shirt sold with Martinho. Adam Atriore. New signing David Neres. Getting involved as well. Your success definitely helped the club finances. And this is the best 11. As Rui Patricio with Ainori, Connor Cody, Willy Bowley and Semedo. Neves and Dendenek in the middle. With Vinicius Jr. on the left. Martinho, Adama Traore and of course Raul Jimenez starting up front. Manager awards? I didn't get any. So I'm, I'm not wonder for awards anyway. Don't, did, jokes on them. Didn't even want to win anyway. But uh, Raul Jimenez is the fans player of the season. Ryan Aitnori is the young player of the year. David Neres signing of the season. And of course, Vinicius Jr. grabbing the goal of the season. Raul Jimenez was the North American player of the year as well. Well done to him. And do we have any record breakers? Well, there we go. You can you can see all them yourself. But uh, but that is the end of the season. The, the sort of summary of what's going on. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, team meetings and things to sort out. But that's going to be the end of the FM21 Wolves beta save. As I said, I knew we were going to go on for a few seasons, but like I say, I think with FM21 now being fully released, we need to get into the nitty gritty. We need to get into the main save and get that all started out. But we will be coming back to Wolves, whereas we will be participating in a beta tournament. So keep an eye on the channel for that. Keep an eye on Twitter for that as well, at SuperSwanYT, to find out what's going on there. But uh, been a fun save. We achieved. We got to sixth place. And uh, that's going to set up so very nicely for the main save on the channel. Coming very, very soon. Keep an eye out for that. But as always, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 2021 content. As there will certainly be more coming up on the channel. We do upload every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. 6 p.m. GMT. Thank you so much for your support on the beta. It's been hitting record numbers for beta saves. And I hope to see you very, very soon. So for some more FM21 goodness. Thank you very much for watching.